<laughs> Do not swim in that. Okay. Just don't drink it. And you thought going to your local pool and swimming in other kids' urine was bad. Oh, it's Victor! Working on gadgets from a young age. What are you, some kind of loser who wants to play with toys instead of swimming in Piltover sludge water? I'm kind of excited to be getting this backstory. Victor is a character who I initially thought was kind of suspicious, but has grown on me. Yeah. Technology just getting out a little bit ahead of him. It's a metaphor. Don't be afraid. That is 100% a Pokemon. Loneliness is often the byproduct of a gifted mind. What is it? Already recognizing him for his talents. Which is a rare mutation that I cultivated. It's kind of cute. You want to assist me? Very well. This was the most auspicious random cave wandering into I've ever seen. That feeling when you wander into a cave and found find your mentor. Do you contemplate death, Professor? Only that of friends. How long do these things live? Guys, seen some stuff. You should be proud of what you've accomplished, Victor. Figments. My contributions will be short-lived, even in your memory. That was surprisingly touching. It's sad, but at the same time heartwarming that his regret is not contributing. I feel really bad, actually, because, first of all, I had the wrong first impression of Victor. Something about the way he approached Jace in the beginning felt shady, which doesn't mean there isn't that risk to him. I feel like he's sort of pushing things a little too fast technologically with the crystals in order to satisfy whatever this deficiency is in his reflections on his life. But that being said, I feel like there are, there are worse motivations than wanting to leave a legacy that helps people. And then also separately for Uncle Heimdinger, because I <laughs> Made fun of him a lot, but I feel like as things start to fall apart, as it feels they inevitably will, he's going to remain standing as something sort of outside the chaos. I really liked him being juxtaposed against the politicians in the opera scene. He's old-fashioned and he seems a little bit out of the loop politically, despite being a council member, but that's really easy to forgive in light of the darkness that is present in some of the other characters and in this world. There's definitely an arc to be had by him as well. I didn't know you were an artist. Yeah, I was about to say, where did she find the time between all the political maneuvering? Sorry for disappearing last night. Yeah, I thought that was abrupt. He calls. But I had a good reason. It was Victor in the hospital. I think it has something to do with gases in the fissures where he grew up. Exactly the sort of thing we wanted to fix with Hextech. Improving lives, solving real issues, not just trade disputes. Right. Victor saved my life once. Stay now focused on what's important. And there's nothing I can do. I'm an exile from my family. What? I fell short of Madada standards. She fell short? This is falling short? What were their expectations? You should be with him, Chase. We can't change what fate has in store for us, but we don't have to face it alone. It's really sweet of her to understand that. His blood got mixed in with the magical Rubik's Cube. Jack! Theorem. Uh, my name's Theorem. Nice try, Chuck. Your name is what I tell you it is. Chuck. Boss wants us to grab someone up. He's terrified of her. Why wasn't I invited to the party? And I, I don't know. They, they got in a fight with Savika. Did a number on her. Ah, Savika. We hate Savika. He's got a keyblade. Interesting. He's in the intro. We lost her. I was wondering who the guy in the mask is. Lost Oops. Him. You're creating very difficult work environments for the staff. The powder just kills Sabika. I feel like you and I got off on the wrong arm. There's something very Joker-like about Powder, especially with the gas. She's with some girl in Forcer. Guess she replaced you. You're lying! It's only a matter of time before you implode, and Silco finally gets the message that you're about as good for our cause as you were for your family. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that that was effective, unsurprisingly. Ten out of ten toots. I think I know. She even says toots. That message. I mean, she played that off as a joke, but I can't see how that wouldn't hit Bone. I mean, so much of her constitution is built on the trauma of that incident. Evidence of this includes the fact that she keeps flashing back to it, general instability, and the fact that she has a lounge filled with dummies of her dead friends. But then again, it's not like she's just hanging out purposeless. Silco is definitely building her into something else, something that more closely resembles him. She just did that whole, like, death of powder baptism thing in the sludge water. 
about time. Dad oh, died. you've crossed the line. She was about your age. Her father went on a long trip, and Daddy here assured me that she left with him. But it seems yeah, it's like the one good thing that cop did, if you call rescuing, putting her in jail. But he may have saved her life at least. Just like them, she does whatever she wants. I can't control her. Then of what use are you? You're gonna say that in front of his daughter? They cannot be allowed to resurface. Do we understand each other? I don't know. If I'm this cop, that backfired. You just mix this with family. <laughs> and you gotta be mean to the girl too? Accidents happen. True villainy. All the murder and stuff he did was alright, but that was where he crossed the line. This is hard to explain, but I feel like if I find myself in a position where I am on the weaker end of a relationship dynamic, or don't have solid footing in the relationship, the reason I'm there is because the things I get out of the relationship are more meaningful to me in some level than the parts of myself I'm willing to sacrifice. But no one likes feeling like they're losing, right? No one likes feeling like they're compromising themselves, even if they're getting that thing they want more. The way I find myself rationalizing those situations, correctly or incorrectly, is that, well, it'll be alright to sacrifice these things things now because I'll get around it like I'll turn a corner and I'll get what I want out of this and I will not have to keep compromising myself forever because that's a that's a slow bleed you know it's a death by a thousand cuts this kind of thing but that all comes to a screeching halt when I realize the other person has a grip on me that they don't want to let go of and where I rationalized I was willing to make certain sacrifices to win this game isn't a valid thought because the other person isn't playing by the same game. They don't have rules. And so it's inevitably going to be my destruction because they're never going to give that up and they're going to keep taking. And this is a moment where you've now crossed into things that I value more highly and shown me that you don't have the same boundaries that I have. And so I'm now going to try to find a way out of this in a way where I win. And I'm going to do so secretly because I don't trust you. So I'm hoping this means that this cop will make something like amends for his decisions and his weakness, at least for his daughter's sake. <laughs> It responds to organic matter. This could be the breakthrough we needed. Could be the key to augmenting physiology, extending life, curing you. That's where my mind went as well. Okay. I'll have Sky bring Heimerdinger. He might know something that could help. In the meantime. Yeah, involve Heimerdinger. I feel like that would be good for so many reasons. Bring him in the loop. What is this place? What? Is Thank this? People, you topsiders don't want to think about wind up. It was never this big though. I'm wondering what is the obstacle that prevents people in Piltover from lending their resources to Undercity? I mean, obviously the will is there from some people at least. Jace has spoken to that. Why this divide? Why this discrepancy? You topsiders always find a way to screw us. I suppose topside is to blame for all your misfortunes. <laughs> Not all of them. Not all of them, yeah. I shouldn't have left you. It's all right. Despite it all, I can tell. You have a good heart. You've got a good heart. There's so much opportunity for a character, and I think part of it's reflected in this relationship and in this conversation. She's been trying unsuccessfully to put everything on her back for the duration of the show, but it just hasn't been working, and that's all right. It's tough because there's this thin line where like you want to take on responsibility and you want to rise to your potential and you don't want to shy away from difficulty and you want to be as mature as you possibly can but you take one step over that line and it ends in self-destruction and as I think is very literally represented by the show your destruction ends up being a destructive force that ripples out and affects others as well it would be great to see this partnership work out and for her to have a comrade and then to come back and approach it again in a stronger way what is that it's funny how I made fun of him so much in the beginning now I feel like it's a breath of fresh air. It's like when you're a kid and you want to think you're all cool and grown up and independent and you want adults off your back and out you go into the world and immediately bring disaster upon yourself and then search desperately for an adult to come save you, if that makes sense. Heimdigger has become that adult for me. It's an adaptive rune matrix. Hextech that evolves. It's, it's, it's groundbreaking. The cat's been burned before. Is this a vision? You must destroy it. Wait. No, I won't let you. Ugh, this is tough. That's your opinion. We'll see if the council agrees. Yeah, they're sort of on equal footing, right? <laughs> that cat is not happy. He got zapped by a laser and he took that personally. I, I owed her old man my life. <laughs> Probably more than that. Oh, is this the, the professor? Why would you take something that does that to you? I just wanted to feel what it was like to be somebody. To make other people afraid. Well, it worked. Anyway, I, I, I don't want her to, to see me like this. This poor guy. J just, just tell her, uh, tell her I'm sorry about everything. Okay? 
It's a sweet gesture. I'm gonna take a totally random guess, just by nature of the fact that we haven't seen him, that maybe the guy behind the mask is the kid that gave him information in the beginning. I don't know why that came to mind. This city was founded to be a bastion of enlightenment in a world that cannibalized itself over power and pride. But we've forgotten, loosened our morals in favor of comfort and convenience. Time diggers woken up. If we set aside our greed and arrogance, we can be one again. You just made yourself very unpopular. We must hold each other accountable. Oh, no, the A word. What? Oh, no, Jace, he's not your enemy. You forget yourself. That's not the right response. You are the true father of Piltover. And your years of service can never be repaid. Oof. I believe it's time we gave the beloved founder of our city a well-deserved retirement. Oh. Jace, don't do this. No, you can keep him on. <laughs> Sips coffee. With my deepest respect and appreciation. She's the first one. Oh my god, what a... Oh no! Uncle Heimdinger! The disrespect. At such an unfortunate time, too, because I feel like just you give him a little time, he's getting there. Jace has some valid criticisms. And even though the show is sort of making it clear that there will be a lot of destruction because of this technology, at this point for them, it's not clear. Like, it could also be a great thing. So for me, it's not really about if the professor is right or wrong. I just don't think that's the way to handle it. I feel like people are really quick to try to crush dissent, but I actually feel like it's super important. Like, even if people are wrong, you, you want that viewpoint, no? Especially with this much at stake. Heimdigger's point of view is at least worth considering, and at the end of the day, they vote, right? So you want to hear as many voices as possible, right? And then collectively make the best decision you know how to make. But you don't just destroy the whole man's life because he's not agreeing with you. That's how that felt to me. Sort of a disappointing moment for Jace. Especially because I feel like you can trust Heimdigger. And that's more than I can say for a lot of people. This is going to be the second time I say this in two videos. But you can't let these emotional arguments be the only factor in these decisions. You have to first give credit to the emotional stakes the characters are facing. Yes, we would like to avoid Victor's death. Everyone is probably in agreement about that. No one is the enemy there. And speaking of which, that's a really common mistake I see all the time. It's easy to draw this sort of line where I want this outcome. I think this method is the best way of achieving that outcome. This other person, my opponent, doesn't believe that's the best method. That means they don't want that outcome. That is often not the case at all. Generally, I think people want similar outcomes. People want to improve things and want to believe themselves to be people who are fighting for good causes. Very rare are people who are like the Joker and Batman who just want to see everything burned. I feel like it's just a basic facet of nature to want to like yourself and to believe that you are someone doing valuable things. But unfortunately, the way it often gets framed is if you're not on my side in terms of the means, it means you have an evil end. Like this whole group of people who disagree with me about the best way to approach a problem are doing so because of sinister motives. For me, that's a really convenient way of dismissing the hard work of actually contending with their arguments. Victor is Heimdigger's pupil, it seems. He's someone he deeply cares about. It's hugely unfair to accuse him of not wanting a solution. He's just weighing other things as well and doesn't believe this is the right method to achieving their goals as a committee and as safeguards of this society. Perhaps the heart has to be addressed first and the motives be made clear. Like, I also want this. I want people to live and flourish. I want this person I care about to not die. Let's establish that as a baseline and then let's have the discussion about what actually is the best method to obtain that without causing massive harm that undoes the good we're doing. Fine. All right, that was the hallucination. When that high potion hits. He used to live here. Who's powder? That's a big question. My sister, how do you not know if your sister is alive or dead? I mean, I've been in jail for seven years, yeah. <laughs> what an insensitive question. Oh, he's right there. He's just there. And his prodigy. Handling things personally. I'm gonna find her. She's still got the pepper shaker. Yeah, well. You talk too much. She's not rushing in. He'll be alright. He won't go out like that. Wherever you are, light it up and I'll find you. Will she remember? I would forgive her for not recognizing the symbol, but it would mean so much if she showed up right now. God, that's morbid. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. Did you see it? Jeez. Yeah, he's a great guy, Silco. A villain with redemptive qualities. Oh, she saw it! It's heartbreaking because you feel like it's all there. Powder is stuck in a moment that despite all her rationalizing and all her efforts to be strong and independent and powerful, mirroring, you know, the way the show started with them, you know, trying to be adults, she would, at least on some level, gladly accept the chance to restart with Vi. But she can't be the one to do that. It has to be Vi because Vi was the one who, in her eyes, cast her aside. And so you mourn for the lost opportunity there. If she did indeed pass that up. Obviously, she doesn't know it's Powder and she got kind of yanked away. And sadly, I feel like that's a truth of human experience but perhaps in many smaller ways than powder. There are events in our lives that sort of create a skewed trajectory and it's almost impossible to write the trajectory from that point on without sort of backtracking to an earlier place. People get caught on these things. They get caught and they don't recover. And you see that in people's patterns of self-destruction. What they're doing in a sense is seeking that earlier state to affect a different outcome. It's a very bizarre sort of emotional survival mechanism that often helps with being unhelpful because there's that awareness missing of what it means and a sort of inability to let go of the, the structures that have been created around that trauma. That's one of the best parts about Fruits Basket, the anime, is that exact journey. But I feel like at this point, Powder isn't going to be able to do that by herself, but would be able to do that with Vi there to give her a little bit of structure or someone to lean on, to open up enough to revisit that and start over. As for Silco, he's a really great villain in terms of how sinister he is, but I really don't buy this thing about progress about how he can justify doing all these terrible things to help the people of Undercity. I think scenes like that make it really clear that it's about his own gain. Because if he really was concerned for the downtrodden, if this really was something that he saw was inevitable in order to help people who are in a bad state, he wouldn't be tossing drugs at these people and he wouldn't be beating his subordinates to death. You did this? I thought you understood. The mutation must survive. The mutation? He didn't care about him at all. I thought the mutation referred to this animal. I understand now. What does that mean for Victor? What is he going to sacrifice? Oh no. Powder? She did make it. That is a huge relief. Oh, Powder. You gotta tread really carefully. And Vi, of course, doesn't know. Uh oh, I'm trauma, trauma with that stone and loved ones. I tried to come back. I promise I did, but I, I got arrested. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, it doesn't matter. I just, I never thought I'd see you again. So far, so good. So far, so good. Things changed when you left. I That's all right. That's all right. It's not too late. You did what you had to do to survive. Yes. Me too. It's okay. That's what we needed. Oh, oh no, stay away. Step, take a step back for a second. One second. You're playing me. Shut up. I'm in no mood. Ugh. Was that why you came? For this stupid stone? No. Oh. No, it's not for the stone. You can fire that thing if you want, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to abandon you again. Oh, she said again. She brought that back. Oh, look who it is. This is- your timing is awful. You have the worst timing in the world. Oh, yeah, uh, okay, let's not shoot the stone. I love their designs. Nice. <laughs> it looks awesome. They do the movement so well. Nice. <laughs> oh. Is it the kid? Is it Info Kid? Ah, oh, we were, we were getting somewhere. Just when we were getting somewhere. Ah. Oh. It feels good that they had that chance. I was worried that it would linger until the end and that they would end up killing each other. And that still might happen, but there's some hope. Obviously, there's a lot to reconcile between the two of them. Powder's changed a lot and is not gonna just do a 180, but the desire is clearly there that I think if they managed to have a longer moment and keep going like that, it would have been a major turning point for her character and their relationship. So I hope that that continues, but also I feel like there aren't gonna be that many opportunities because she's slipping and also there's a counter force, which is Silco. And so we just got robbed by the Firefly or whatever they're called. So that made for a really gripping scene. And then add in the fact that it was visually stunning. That's some of the best I've seen in the show so far. That's how you do a video game fight, <laughs> I feel. It struck a nice balance, I think, between being 
fantasy and video game like while also feeling balanced if that makes sense given the setting so i feel like a lot changed and kind of got imbalanced that episode jace i feel like took a darker turn and powder took a turn for what feels like the better although hard to say if it's enough victor also seeming to take a dark turn and uncle moogle heimdinger becoming the <laughs> the person i want to see have have an arc sort of wake up as he was starting to in this episode and make something happen well it's tough now without his power